And here's the thing. How can you physically stop people crossing the channel? How can you physically, how can the UK physically stop people crossing the channel? We had some some interesting suggestions yesterday. When you talk to politicians and, and people in this kind of area, um, you, you often find that, that the greatest wisdom, in fact, doesn't come from the, the, the font of all political knowledge like Westminster. It actually comes from just ordinary people who've looked at this story and thought, actually, I think there is a way of doing this. Um, as far as I can work out, the issue of channel migration kind of divides people more politically now than it does morally. I don't think there's a person on the planet who doesn't have sympathy with someone bringing their baby across a perilous piece of water, even though the weather right now is great. Uh, many of those journeys ha have happened during winter time. Temperatures out there at sea are below zero. So we all get that. Nobody wants to see people drown. But the story does seem more political. If you look online, you'll see people either describe channel migrants in two distinct ways. Uh, they're either vulnerable refugees, the boy Jones using that for vulnerable refugees, or economic migrants. First question, which one is it? 0344 499 1000. I was doing just some research into where these people come from. The picture, by the way, is ever-changing. Uh, about a year ago, the story very much centred on Iranians. Almost every boat that arrived in Dover and over the south coast locations contained people from Iran. Now, this was easily explained. In 2018, Serbia hit on an agreement with Iran. Uh, you could fly from Iran to Serbia visa-free. Uh, this was supposed to boost tourism and trade between the two countries. It's only a four-hour flight, by the way, so it didn't take long for plane loads of Iranians to take up this offer, and those planes would take off from somewhere like Tehran, absolutely chock-a-block, and return empty, because many of the Iranians thought, I've got no intention of returning to my home country. And the rest, of course, you can work out. Serbia is just a, a foot away into the EU, and so the journey begins. 20 days later, those people are in Calais. A few days after that, they're in the UK. So that's how that bit worked. We now know that other groups of people from Yemen, Eritrea, Chad, Egypt, Sudan, Iraq, many, of course, asked to claim asylum once they get here, once they're picked up by UK authorities. Uh, here's the thing, and it doesn't have to be, and because it's so divided, I was saying to Mike Graham just before the news, I'm hearing people on the left, this is absolutely happening, I'm not trying to score a cheap point here, I'm hearing people very much on the left of the political spectrum, essentially just making stuff up about what they think people on the right believe and then arguing against it. It's a classic, it's a sort of classic mechanism, the straw man argument. It happens quite a lot. And uh, I, I've always scratched my head thinking, well, nobody's saying that. I'm, I'm not, I don't know anybody who thinks these things. Uh, you so if you say, for example, you don't get as a migrant, as an, if you are a, a refugee or an economic migrant, whatever phrase you want to use, you don't get to choose your own country. It's, it's not a buffet of countries where you just get just a fact. I can't go and live in South Korea because it looks pretty steady, forward thinking as a place full of great minds, huge employment details, more neon lights than a set of Blade Runner. I can't just do that because I fancy it. If I was a communist, I can't just move to China. If I'm a capitalist, I can't just move to Monte Carlo just because I don't like the cut of my own government's jib. I can't do that. Now, I've no doubt that if you live in Chad or Eritrea, particularly in an area, uh, in an era now where you're seduced by the digital world, so you've got more information, news channels, social media, multi-platform TV, I'm pretty sure Romford looks rather tasty in comparison to Massacori. I'm pretty sure you might think, oh, that looks quite a nice place to go, and my government's a little bit wobbly. Just because you want to come somewhere doesn't mean you have the right to go somewhere. It's a nice idea. And so it comes down to whether we believe those crossing the channel are economic migrants or whether we believe they are vulnerable refugees. Now, when, once you're in that boat, I get it, you're for the purpose of, for the duration of that journey, you're quite vulnerable. I mean, this is a perilous bit of sea. Uh, but of course, just because you're on that boat doesn't automatically make you a vulnerable refugee. In fact, everything I've ever reported on these stories suggests to me that these are economic migrants, or they're migrants that don't like the government of the country they currently live in. And by the way, newsflash, I don't blame them for that. 
I genuinely do not blame. If I was living in the hellhole that is the Iranian under the Iranian current Iranian government, I'd be thinking I'd quite like to leg it. But it's not a war zone right now. It might be disagreeable. If we extend this logic to the remainder of the world, we would just pick and choose wherever we want to go. I don't like the I don't like the Tories, so I think I'll go and live in Canada. I mean, you can't, it doesn't work like that. It might not be palatable to you. You might decide you don't like what is going on. But at the moment, that isn't the way that immigration works. And so if you bat from the left, what you tend to do is just make up stories about the vulnerability of people coming in. And then you start making comparisons about what happened, you know, post or during the, the 1930s and the 40s and suggesting that it's the same thing. And it's not the same thing. And there's the problem. And then, of course, you have the other factor that's thrown in on this, uh, which is if you dare to say something like, well, what about the resources that we put into immigration? And it's not great, by the way. I've, I've never said, and again, I don't know many people who genuinely think that if you suddenly pitch up in the UK, that you suddenly get a house made out of flat screen TVs, 500 quid a week in your back pocket, private medical care and anything else that you require. You don't get that. I know that. But that isn't the purpose. Most of those people coming over here also know that. The free health care will be attractive. I don't think you tend to travel halfway around the world in the back of a truck, which may just get lost and left somewhere in a car park on your way. I mean, you take a certain risk in doing this. I don't dispute any of this. But if you are making the point that in this country we have lots of vulnerable people that also need help. That's not a disingenuous argument. Since when did it become xenophobic to say that I want to look after frail and elderly people? And if there's millions and millions of pounds floating around in a budget that is currently being used by people who just want to live somewhere else, I would rather that money was used domestically to try and settle some of our own problems and issues. Since when did that? Why is that a bad thing? How did that get turned on its head to mean that secretly you don't care about vulnerable refugees? Because, of course, we're not really talking here about vulnerable refugees. Why is that so difficult for some parts of the political spectrum to get their head around? We are not talking in this case about that. Now, doubtless, over time, there will be some people who will escape a tyrannical war zone who want to go elsewhere, that's a whole different story. But all the arguments that people, I, I see it online. Look, they've turned up nicely dressed, fit young men with the latest iPhone. That happens to be true on some occasions. And if that is true, why would you not want to point that out? I mean, if you're claiming refugee status when actually your reasons are economical, that's about as egregious as it gets, frankly. That's a very bad thing to do. That's playing the system. You wouldn't get away with it anywhere else. I don't think you would get away with it here. And I don't think you should be castigated as a Brit for suggesting that you smell a bit of a rat over this. You're not satisfied that this is, you know, this isn't like people escaping the Nazis. That's not what we're talking about. Who does not want to help somebody in that position? Of course you do. And if you didn't, there's something wrong with you. Get out of here. I don't think that's what we're talking about here, which should make should make it, I would have thought, a little, I don't want to say easier because there's nothing easy about this story, but it should make it a little more straightforward in assessing how we move forward. And one of the reasons, one of the things that everybody is utterly terrified, we've got this letter that was sent to Priti Patel from a group of 20-odd uh, Conservative MPs about what is going on. But broadly speaking, People don't want to put their head above the parapet because they are scared of somebody on another part of the political spectrum making up stories about them. Oh, we secretly know what you think. Xenophobe, uncaring, just like what happened back then in that you don't want to help people. You don't want to help the vulnerable. There's a woman with a baby. Of course, who? Nobody. There's no one in the world that wants to see people drown. If you do, you have something wrong with you. That doesn't mean to say you can't simultaneously have a pretty robust idea about how to deal with something. 0344 499 1000. And the term economic migrants, by the way, doesn't have to be used. It's not a pejorative. 
It's not meant to be inflammatory. It's not to upset anybody or make some kind of extreme point. It's just a basic observation and, in many respects, a basic term of fact. It's kind of as simple as that. Which brings us to the rather obvious question. What is the answer? Politicians can't seem to work it out, can you?